Hi, so in this lecture, we're going to continue on the topic of transfer functions. So we're going to develop the transfer function for the DC motor. And for this, we're going to focus on a high fidelity model. In a previous video that you might have watched, we focused on a low fidelity model. So now we're going to focus on the high fidelity. Starting point, what we're going to do is derive the ordinary definite equation, and then we'll move that on to the transfer function. So after this lecture, you should be able to understand how the DC motor, high fidelity model, ordinary differential equation model is derived. And this is the, the form of the DC motor that we're looking at here. Undertake the Laplace transformation on the ordinary differential equation, and then that then enable you then to rearrange it into the transfer function form. If any of these steps you're struggling here, re-watch the four part video that I did on the transfer functions. So if there's any steps that don't make sense as we're going through, refer yourself back to the, the, the four videos um, that I first of all put together on transfer functions. So I'm going to start off by giving you an introduction. So a DC motor is a common actuator used for a control system. So what the DC motor effectively allows you to do is to make change to the state of a system. So it could be an example, could be that we use a DC motor to provide rotary um, motion. So if we look here, rotary motion, you can see here we've got in terms of, well, in this case, the, the rotor is going to a desired position, and that's in the, vir the MathWorks virtual lab. Or you can see here, you can see this rotation of this shaft here on this actual DC motor with the gearbox here. And it could be, I don't know, that we could be doing speed control on that. But rotational motion, so it could be we could attach gears and a pulley to this kind of the shaft on this on this uh, DC motor. And it could be used to drive a wheel to effectively go from one point in space to another. So as an actuator method, that's obviously going to enable you to, to move that wheel and to potentially, once you've got that as part of a control system, to be able to stop the motor at maybe a given position or to get the, the drive wheel to travel at a given um, given um, revolutions per minute or given velocity, whatever, speed. Um, so forming part of a control system. So it could be for, yeah, like I say, velocity control of a vehicle or position control of a vehicle. But the DC motor enables you to effectively move the vehicle. So we've got here, I've got a DC motor here that's taken apart. So just so you can have a look, so it's, uh, kind of the different parts within the within the motor. So the rotor, shaft and stator, so you can see that. And then to begin with the modeling, what we've got here is an electric circuit and the free body diagram. So electric circuit and the free body diagram for the DC motor. You can see the modeling parameters defined as follows down here. So I'll quickly run through these, although you can read them quicker than I can say them. So T is torque, J is the moment inertia of the rotor, B is the motor viscous friction constant, theta is the motor shaft angle. So theta dot is effectively the, the angle angular velocity. And then if it was theta double dot, it'd be angular acceleration. R is the, res the electrical resistance, L is the electrical inductance, V is the voltage, E is the back EMF, I is the current, and then we've got these two constants here, which K subscript E, which is electromotive force, and K subscript T, which is the motor torque constant. So these are all going to be used in this and this free body diagram here and the electric circuit to effectively derive the order differential equation that you'll see on the next slide. What we're now going to do is derive the Audi differential equation of the DC motor. This is based on the illustration on the previous slide. So where we had the electrical circuit and then the free body diagram for the DC motor. So using Newton's second law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can derive equation 2, 1 for the mechanical part and equation 2 for the electrical part, where J is the moment of inertia of the rotor. This here, theta double dot, is the angular acceleration. And this here, equation 2, 1, is effectively a second order equation. Plus B, which is the motor viscous friction constant. And then here we have the angular velocity is equal to, and then this T, this torque here. Then we've got the electrical equation where 
L is the electrical inductions or the inductions. Um, rate of change here, so this is a first order equation, two orders, just one, where I is the current, the rate of change of current, plus resistance, then the current term here, which is equal to the voltage, take away the back EMF. So these following two equations, so what we can say is the torque is proportional to current, so it's given by this equation. So the torque here, which is given here, is equal to the current here with this um, constant term here, where the constant term is the motor torque constant. The back EMF, so this E here, is related to the rotational velocity. So back EMF is, or the angle of velocity or rotational velocity, whatever you want to call it, is given by this, where again, we've got this constant here for the electric motive force constant. What we can do now is we can substitute equation 3, 1 into equation 2, 1, and then we'll get this equation given here. And likewise, we can substitute equation 2, 4 into equation 2, 2. So this E here can be substituted into here, and then we end up with this equation here. This here is our two um, equations for the audio differential equation that we will now use forward on the next slide and the next part of this video. So if you watch part two of this video, where we'll effectively undertake the little pass transformation and then come up with a transfer function based on these two equations. So please yeah, watch part two if that's if you want to kind of understand how that we get the transfer function from these equations. If you have any questions regarding any of this, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.